let me catch my breath Let me drink my fill Let me lie in fields of green Where only gentle breezes blow I'll reach out my empty and blessings to the beloved St. Paul Church community on this third Sunday after Pentecost here at the church courtyard and today we will celebrate morning prayer. So if you've got your prayer book with you I do invite you to turn to page 79 and today we hear the opening words let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Amen. As we gather for this service of morning prayer, we begin with the confession of sin. So let us in this next moment of silence confess our sins against God and our neighbor. And we pray, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you through thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. Lots of wind here in the courtyards. I'm trying to keep my prayer book ready. Hmm. On the top of page 82, I invite us to say together the Venitae. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. For the sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The, today's psalm reading is going to be from Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp and the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. The works of your hand I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your, your thoughts are very deep. We continue now on verse 12. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They, they still bear fruit in old age, and they are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading today is our gospel text on this third Sunday in Pentecost, and it comes from the gospel according to Mark. We are in chapter 4, starting at verse 26. And he said... The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God and, and what parable shall we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and, and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. 
what a joy it is to be here in a garden and to remember that God has given us all these images in the Bible about how small things can grow large. And, and I think especially in this Pentecost season, as we think about the Spirit who's indwelling in us, we can think about growth. Think about where we are personally and say, Lord, how can I grow larger and larger according to your will, according to your way to become more like you? And so in this Pentecost season, I hope you are individually asking, how can you grow? How can you read scripture more, read the Bible, spend more time in prayer, spend more time in service to others, spend more time in glorifying and praising the God of all creation? This is a chance, a, a season for us to think about growth. It's not just individually, though. We, we also think about that as a church family or a church community? How is it that we can participate fully in this, this beautiful thing we call a church family? And I, I do pray that you are able to join us when you can for live services or here online. There's going to be several more opportunities for you to, to connect. And I, I hope that you take those opportunities and, and grow with us as a church now, I'm excited because right after this service, I'm going to take a little bit of a tour of the things going on, the construction work going on at our facility, because we do believe that as we finish that remodeling, we'll have a chance again to gather together as a church. But I, but I hope that doesn't feel like a finish line to us, that we have our church building and we can join back in. I hope it's a new start line to say that now we can invite more people. We'll have room for folks to gather for worship and to praise the Lord. And, and especially as we're coming out of this season of pandemic, this time where folks were so isolated that, that we would truly celebrate the fact that we can gather. And we celebrate that by inviting others to join us. So, so I believe individually and as a church family, we have a season of growth ahead of us. And I invite you into the fullness of what that all means. So blessings to you as we continue through this Pentecost season, a season of growth, a season of the Spirit of God. We, we know that His presence now, His Spirit is present with us, and that gives us power, and that gives us our identity as His people. Blessings to all. As we continue now in our celebration of morning prayer, I, I invite us into a time of, of first declaring our beliefs. And, and we do so using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and burn, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and is seated and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in to, get, to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we spend some time in prayer. So the Lord be with you. Let us pray. We begin with the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. So together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the suffrages set A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, 
and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We pray the colic for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such a blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversity through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And also now this colic for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. So preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor become overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the filling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we gather, we recognize there are many things on our hearts and minds, uh, prayers of concern and need, and also prayers of thanksgiving, that responding to God's blessing in life. So in these next moments, I invite you to lift to the Lord what is on your heart this day. Lord God, there are many people in our church family who need your healing grace. So I, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that you would bring your healing grace to each and all who need your touch, Lord. Do it in your power, in your time, in your will. But Lord, may your presence be known in all who are in need. Lord, we give you great thanks for all the ways that you bless us. We are a grateful people. Lord, help us to be thankful in all ways, not only with our lips, but as we live out our lives. May we be your grateful servants. Amen. Now we pray the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray... Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with uh, you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Just a, a quick word before our dismissal. There are many opportunities for us to gather here in the next little while. Men, we've got the hamburgers and horseshoes coming up in um, 
hamburgers and horseshoes at my house coming up in in July. And also, ladies, we'll have the vino with the vicar, two different sessions, both with our curate, our new curate, Julian Borda. It's a chance for you to come and ask questions and get to meet him a little bit more and, and also to come and see my remodeled house. Like I said, in a moment, I wanna take you and show a few pictures and a little bit of video of, of what's happening in the remodel. So you can see our, our facility is coming closer that we can join back together. And then the last uh, bit of information is that we are having a gateway dinner. So if you are new to the St. Paul Church family and you'd like to gather with what we call our new members a dinner, a chance to say, yes, this St. Paul Church family is the, the place that I want to know to be known as a part of, a member of, then, then please um, let the office know that and we are excited to gather together in ministry, in fellowship, in service to our community and the world. Blessings to all. And we end by saying, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of glory died My richest gain I count but loss And poor contempt On all my pride Forbid it, Lord That I should boast Save in the dead Christ my God, all the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love. Ha, ha, ha.